Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm excited to be with you here um, for Drawing Is In Part 2. My name is Jennifer Prince, and just to be clear, that's P-R-I-N-T-Z. Um, and I'm based here in Miami. Typically, I work out of my studio at the Big House Arts Complex, um, but since we've been sheltering um, in place, I've been working here in the um, guest bedroom um, at my home in Miami. So today we're gonna work through, we're gonna draw a little bit. So the first thing I thought I would do um, is talk a little bit about the project and the items you might wanna grab if you're gonna draw along with me. Then I'll change the camera position so you can see a little better um, what I'm doing. So since we've been um, sheltering in place, um, I've been working on this little series that I refer to as Bird Skies. So I'm actually collaging images from um, the sky out of commercial magazines um, down onto paper and then creating drawings around them, sort of thinking a little bit about the commodification of something that can't be commodified. Um, so what we're going to do today is actually work through a little collage drawing. So the first thing that you'll need um, is any kind of collage materials you might have at hand. Um, and this is always a good excuse for me to um, keep some magazines around. And then I just rip out the pages that have um, something interesting. For me, it's usually textures, images of sky, water, um, but find whatever makes you happy. Then you'll need something to actually cut um, what you're wanting out. So you may need just regular old scissors. Um, I like using exacto knives, but scissors work. And then of course you can also tear it. Then we'll need something to glue our collage elements down. So just for today, we're gonna keep it fast and easy. Um, and if you've got a glue stick laying around, go grab that. Um, I'll show you a couple of tips and tricks on the best way to use a glue stick. Um, so you'll also need um, I use folding bones, but if you've got, just get a butter knife um, or something that's smooth and hard that you can rub with and add pressure. The back of the spoon would work really well. A couple of scrap sheets of paper. This is also for gluing. So just whatever you have, um, even grabbing something out of your recycle bin would work fine. As long as it's clean, um, that would be great. Paper to draw on. Now, just make sure to really make this work and get the best results, make sure you're drawing with some a paper that's a little thicker than the magazine paper we're collaging with. Um, so again, I'm just using a scrap here. Maybe I'll actually draw on that side. And then your drawing tools. So I always keep around when I'm drawing several pencils so I can grab at any time. So today I'm gonna to use some typical um, drawing pencils, um, some that have that are wood and some that are woodless. Um, I've already got those sharp and ready to go. And then I love using mechanical pencils. Um, they make me, they help me work a little faster. So I've got those here. Um, and then I also have some colored pencils um, sitting around to go. So up to you if you want to add color or not. And of course, erasers are always handy to have around. So. I like to keep around the big block erasers that you may know, and then these click erasers to get like specific little details. So that, those are the tools that I'm gonna be using today. The other thing that's really crucial is a smooth drawing surface. Cause you know, maybe from experience that if you're drawing on a rough or textured surface, that texture will come through. Um, so typically I draw kind of on this table easel, um, but for today, I'm just gonna draw here on my green um, cutting mat. So that's all the things that we're gonna need. Um, so let's change the camera and we'll get started. Okay, everyone, I've changed the camera around so you can see really clearly what I'm working on as we work through this drawing together. So, um, as I mentioned, this is a little series that I've been working on um, since we've gone under um, quarantine sheltering in place um, that I'm referring to as Borrowed Skies. So in this series, um, I'm working with collage. And as you can see, I'm really playing with edges um, and the shapes of my collage elements and building off of that with drawing with both graphite um, and colored pencil. This one in particular, um, it has a lot of colored pencil. 
So the first thing that we're going to talk about is how to do a collage and some of my tips and tricks. So as I've already mentioned, I like to work with magazine pages and that's sort of the, a lot of the idea behind this. So I just went through a couple of magazines and um, ripped out some things to me that have um, interesting shapes and textures. I gravitate towards sky and water, but you could also play around with something like this amazing um, train here. So there's a couple of different options for how to actually create your collage piece. Um, and the first is just to get started with tearing, which can give you some really intriguing edges. Because as you probably know, when you're um, tearing paper, in one direction, it will tear kind of crazily. You can't control it. Um, and then the other direction, it will tear much more straight. And that has a lot to do with the, the grain of the paper. So in this case, the paper grain was running that way. And as I tore against the grain, it gets all crazy. And that can be a fun thing to work with. The other option is to actually um, cut out a specific shape. Um, and you can do that using your scissors um, and just jump in. But my preferred tool is always the X-Acto knife. Um, that gives me a little bit more control um, with what I'm doing. So if I'm cutting out this shape, I just run the X-Acto knife around towards the shape that I want to cut out. Now, did you notice what I did? And I'll do it again on this side. Um, is I actually started my cut on the inside and worked towards the edge of the paper like that. And that's a really important thing to know because when you start from the outside going in like that, can you see how it kind of the blade snags and pulls at the paper and it can actually rip tear, do all kinds of things that I'm not wanting. But when I start from the inside working out, then I can get a nice, clean, beautiful shape to play with. So that's an important trick. The other thing with using um, an X-Acto knife is just change the blade out as much as you need to um, so that it stays sharp and it's cutting and not tearing. And usually you can tell because your cut will be, become hairy rather than clean. So once I've done that, and I've got a few things to play with, and I have a few others here as well, I like to keep kind of a collection. Um, then I can decide what shapes I'm going to work with, and I'll actually glue those um, onto my drawing paper. So it's nice to first, you know, play around and look with what you got. Experiment before you commit to gluing things down. And I like to do that in a lot of different ways. This lets me be, and I think the thing I really like about this process is it lets me be really spontaneous. Um, I like to plan and organize things um, by nature. So this is a way that helps me break free of that a little bit. So I actually, and I can be really intuitive and I actually like the way this looks. Um, so let's use this. Okay. So I told you that we'd be gluing quick and easy today with glue sticks. So I have my um, glue stick ready to go. Um, and then I also need something to apply pressure. And in this case, I'm using a folding bone. Um, you could use anything, um, the back of a spoon, um, even the back side of a butter knife. And this is probably the most important thing. I have some scrap paper. Okay, so again, just grab something that's clean out of your um, recycle bin, okay? So I've got my drawing paper and my collage pieces. I know where I'm gonna place them. So I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna flip it over onto the scrap paper. And the reason I use the scrap paper is I need to get the glue all the way to the edges. And working on the scrap paper lets me do that without making a mess. Um, so a little bit about me, I'm an um, artist and a college professor, I've been teaching for a while now, but I'm new to Miami teaching at uh, Florida International. So some of these tricks are tricks I've picked up over the years to help students. Um, and one of the tricky things with working with students sometimes is to help them do a good job and keep the studio in shape. 
Okay, so now that I've got glue completely on there, and of course the addition of glue, the paper wants to kind of stretch a little bit, so I'm delicate. And I just take my fingers now and kind of smooth that into place like so, okay? Then I can take this paper that has the glue on it and I typically fold it up and I can use that clean area. Then I take my folding bone and really delicately just burnish and massage things down. So this makes sure that my collage element is going to stay in place for me. So that's always really important when you're gluing. It's about adding adhesive and also pressure, okay? So this little corner is not wanting to stay in place. That's probably because it touched down on that other paper. And this is the beauty of demonstrations. Things sometimes will go wrong, but that's cool. You can learn a little bit more from how I have to respond and fix things, okay? And now I'll do the other piece. So same idea, scrap sheet of paper, glue stick, um, this is just a glue stick I had at home. My favorite are a brand called Yuhu, um, which is U-H-U. Um, they seem to last really well. Okay, so again, I'm using the scrap paper so I can get that glue all the way around the edges. And same thing. I use my fingers first just to get it down. And then I can massage to make sure everything is down really quick. So massage, burnish, <laughs> I guess slightly different words, but I mean the same thing by them. Adding some pressure um, so that everything will stay in place for me really nicely. Okay. So once I've done that, and that's the great thing about glue sticks, it's immediately dry, you know, I'm ready to start drawing. Um, and as you can tell, I do touch my artwork quite a lot. So I'll actually move the cutting mat um, out of the way, and I'll continue to use some of these scrap sheets of paper, actually putting them underneath here uh, for me. Um, so that way I just have a really smooth surface. This table is a little coarse and I like really smooth surfaces. So I'll grab my pencils and actually have them in hand. Um, as well as the colored pencils. So if I uh, want to grab those, I can. All right. So once I have things down, again, I said this process for me is just kind of a fun, intuitive process of working. Then I'll make some um, decisions about how I'm going to tie these two kind of elements together. And I do really like this negative shape in between um, and this kind of beginning of kind of a square. So I think I'm gonna um, play off of that. So I'm gonna grab one of my mechanical pencils I use mechanical pencils a lot. It was a habit or something I kind of picked up when I did an artist residency in Malta, which is an amazing place. If you ever get to go, I strongly recommend and encourage. Um, and I just didn't know as I was preparing what kind of situation, access to supplies, things like that. And I was like, well, one tool that I could travel with really easily and make sure I had a lot of on hand was a mechanical pencil with leads. So I set myself up with a couple of mechanical pencils and lots of different leads um, and have been using it a lot ever since. And the nice thing about it, um, I really I like super sharp points. So when I'm sharpening my pencils, I will sharpen them so that they're ridiculously sharp like that. Um, with the mechanical pencil, of course, I don't have to stop and sharpen. Um, so I'll use them a lot. Today, I'll probably work with this pencil a little bit more because I can get more um, graphite down a little bit more quickly for this quick drawing. Okay. All right. So now I've got that kind of in. I'm also going to play a little bit. I think I want to divide this up. Some areas of graphite and some areas of color. 
So maybe something like so. Okay. All right. So the funny thing about being on camera is how you notice your tendencies. And I'm noticing this morning that I use the word so a lot. <laughs> We're keeping it real. So there, I did it again. You probably know the difference in pencil grades. So this is a 6B and a 4B. But just in case, let me explain. So the two ingredients for um, graphite pencils as we know and use them today are powdered graphite, um, which actually is created in the Earth's core um, through um, a transformative process of organic materials, um, and clay. Those are the two ingredients, graphite and clay. So the higher the B numbers, the more graphite. So the pencils are softer and you get darker, bolder marks. So the 6B is really gonna put down a lot of graphite really quickly for me because it's really soft. So I'm gonna start off with that. Sometimes I like to start with the softer graphite and then I can work into, um, get more details with the harder graphite. I can smooth things out. And that's just my preference. Some artists do it the other way around. All right. So every artist will have a different way of holding um, their pencils and uh, applying um, graphite. And I'm sure if you watch this whole series, which I want to encourage you to do, you'll see a lot of differences in approach and techniques because we're a very intriguing, diverse group of artists. I tend to hold my pencil over to the side, um, especially when I'm using a pencil like this. And this allows me to actually, instead of just draw, when I'm putting down value, instead of just drawing with the point, I am actually able to use the side of the lead and I get a lot more graphite down. I tell my students, this lets me work a little bit more economically, if you will. And it also helps me to get smooth, gradients and transitions. And that's one of the things I love about drawing with graphite is I wanna get smooth, consistent gra gradations. I also love that it's you know a carbon-based material. And in fact, the only difference between graphite and diamonds um, is the fact that um, the carbon molecules have just been arranged slightly differently um, due to the fact that Diamonds typically occur much deeper in the earth and graphite um, is made um, in more shallow uh, veins. And I hope you can hear that. I do also, I like that, that kind of scratch, scratch sound. But what intrigues me about working with graphite, this carbon-based material, is that you know, all life on our planet is carbon-based. It's one of those intriguing things. Um, so it's sort of, it's a nice kind of metaphor for our interconnectedness for me. So one of the things that you might be able to see um, is the importance of the tooth of the paper. So the paper that I'm drawing on today um, has, it's a printmaking paper, so it's got a little bit more tooth than some other papers. So when I'm drawing in this manner, um, that tooth is gonna show, um, unless I work really carefully and diligently um, to fill it in. So that's one thing that um, artists really need to consider when they're drawing is the type of paper that they're drawing on and how that will affect the end result. Um, some papers don't have sizing, which is essentially a glue that helps hold the fibers together. Um, and the hard thing about drawing on those papers is you can't erase, because you, without the glue, when you start to erase, um, the paper just wants to pull and peel up. So that's an important thing to consider. The tooth, which is kind of the surface texture, um, is another thing to consider. Um, with graphite, you can draw on very, very smooth papers, and I tend to prefer those. But with charcoal or pastels, you actually need paper that has some tooth to actually hold on to the um, drawing material. So 
So another thing I wanna point out is the way in which I actually will put the graphite down. So I'm actually kind of going in this kind of elliptical organic manner to kind of exaggerate like so. Um, and that helps me, I can keep overlapping and building up my values without getting an obvious pattern. Sometimes people wanna do what I call typewriter it, and they'll go in one row like this, and then they'll come in another row like this, and they'll keep going. And what happens, and again, it's not bad unless you don't want it, is you start to get this heavy area where the two bands overlap, and it becomes a very strong texture. So that can be interesting for drawing some things, uh, but sometimes it's not ideal. So it's just one of those things I thought I would point out as my little tips and, and tricks for today. If you're not wanting that in your drawing, then try this different kind of approach of these gentle kind of um, ellipses or ovals that you just keep tying together. All right, so now that I've got that, I think I'm gonna put some color in and then I'll come back and deal with um, filling those in. And I do that, and one of the things I think about with my drawings is I think about gestalt or big picture. So I'll block in an element like that, and then I'll block in some of this um, so I can see exactly what's gonna happen before I get too refined, and that's important. So let me grab a couple of um, colored pencils here to work with. So I work with um, Karen Dosh colored pencils. Um, they're the Luminance series. Um, they're really beautiful um, colored pencils, great colors. And part of the reason why I work with these is they're also color fast. Um, and you're probably like, what does that mean? If you're an artist, um, it's important that your um, artwork can stand up to the exposure of light. And works on paper are really susceptible to damage, um, and especially drawing materials. And if you're working and you're just drawing for fun, um, it doesn't matter, right? But if you're working and you're wanting to sell pieces to a collector, um, then you want to use materials that are going to be light fast and um, won't fade from exposure to light. Okay, so I start off with my colored pencils with a similar approach. Again, I sharpen them really um, to really specific um, sharp points. And then I do the same sort of organic ellipses to get the color down. Now when I'm working with colored pencils, um, I tend to put down a base level first. Kind of like a base coat um, or underpainting if you think about painting. And some people do equate sometimes drawing with colored pencils to being a little bit more like painting. But then once I have that base coat down, then I can respond and play with it um, and layer other colors for nuances. If I want an ombre effect or things of that nature. Okay. So just started off with kind of a pale yellow. And then I think I'm going to layer in um, two different colors from each end. Kind of get a fun effect going. So here I've also shifted the directional quality of my marks, which is another trick to think about. You want something to 
have a specific volume or to suggest a movement in space, think of moving your pencil in different directions to help make that happen. And definitely think about pressure because the lighter I go, the more gentle this color feels, kind of more like a wash, whereas my heavier pressure, I start to build it in. The only thing with colored pencils, um, you know, the two ingredients I mentioned of graphite pencils are um, graphite and clay. Colored pencils have a little bit of wax, so you don't want to get too crazy in your pressure because you can get kind of a waxy buildup. Okay. That's another funny thing that I do um, with drawing. I like drawing on easels and tables both and I like being able to kind of flip my drawing around a lot. So I do that all the time. Okay, and then for my finishing touches, I'm gonna come back in with my light yellow pencil and actually kind of layer that back on top to help blend these two colors together. And this is a pretty light approach. It's really just using the lighter color to kind of help blend in and make that kind of ombre gradient effect happen a little bit more clearly. Okay, folks, so that's getting us close to the end of our time. Thank you for coming by today and drawing with me and take care, stay safe and strong. This is Jennifer Prince, P-R-I-N-T-Z, signing out. Feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at Jennifer D. Prince or on my website, jenniferprince.com.